What's going on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. As you guys can see, I'm doing something a little different today. I am celebrating the 4th of July in Wildwood, New Jersey. So I figured we would switch it up a little bit and maybe we'll just dive into the news like this. So I hope everyone's having a really awesome day and let's get to it. Currently at the time of making this video, the market cap is $275 billion with Bitcoin dominance sitting at roughly 41.8% with the biggest mover of the day being Ethos. So Ethos has recently rolled out their wallet in the Netherlands and they are beginning to roll it out in other regions as well. And I think the excitement is definitely being reflected in the price today up almost 40 percent incredible guys congratulations and for everyone out there that's been a firm believer in ethos yeah it's finally here guys finally did it scratch that 64 percent so obviously the biggest news of the day was the whole Binance crazy trading that was really irregular. It turned out to be, uh, it was related to Syscoin and it has nothing to do with the Syscoin blockchain. Initially Syscoin themselves had come out on Twitter and suggested that exchanges potentially halt trading, but it turned out to actually be an issue with the API keys on Binance itself. So API keys essentially are just used for bots, for bots trading, right? So what they did was they actually had to reset the uh, API keys so anyone that's trading with them right now you're gonna have to reset yours as well but in a nutshell basically one syscoin at one point had sold for like 96 Bitcoin it was absolutely crazy so what they ended up doing was anybody that was using the bots they basically did a rollback and for anybody that was just doing manual trading during that time in regards to syscoin they pretty much are just offering free trading so that's how they went about that and at the same time they also started a new fund which is a secure asset fund for users, literally Seifu. Fund Seifu. So they actually set that up and basically what that's gonna do is take 10% of all of the trading fees and put them inside of that account uh, in a cold wallet so that just in case for some reason something does happen down the road, they will at least have a place for funds so that they can essentially compensate users in the event of a catastrophic event. So the other issue that we're still having today is really high Ethereum gas prices. Now it's not as high as it has been, but a lot of people are attributing this to the very different style that Fcoin Exchange is using to get coins listed. As a matter of fact, my crypto on Twitter had a very big rant on this in which, well, there was some particular language used. However, their situation was that in order to get a coin listed, it's not done by a regular poll. It's actually done by a deposit, but it's not done on quantity. It's simply done on deposits. So my crypto basically said that what they're doing in essence is encouraging Sybil attacks for lack of better words. So basically these people are sending uh, you know, different coins to different blockchains, opening up different accounts and basically just spamming everything essentially. So the issue with that is that there happens to be some coins that I, I think have recently got listed, one of them being an ICO that hasn't actually released its tokens yet, and it's a scam coin. And yeah, so that's, that's the issue. So a lot of people are saying that they don't agree with this, and that still has a lot to do with why the networks are congested. Just had to stop for a dolphin break. Also, for anyone out there that was holding Morph tokens, the CEO Danny has released an official statement on how they are going to be handling that token swap. So for anyone out there that was holding the original Morph tokens, they will be traded for the MRPH token. And you can check out his video response. I will leave a link in the description for that as well. Request Network has officially joined the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. The Elastos Foundation has also released their official plan for the airdrops for the Elastos ecosystem airdrop mechanism. Link in the description. While we're on the topic of Elastos, we also have Bit.Game transplanting three very popular games onto the Elastos blockchain, including Maze Frontier, Apes Age, and Age of Emperors. Also following in the footsteps of NEO and NEO News, you also have now elastosnews.net where you can find everything Elastos. Also, as you guys know, NEO has definitely been criticized for being a little bit of a centralized uh, currency. They did release that tweet on Twitter yesterday. It was a little cryptic about moving forward to a decentralized future. Well, we just got the really good news that City of Zion's 
candidate node has officially been elected as a full consensus node, and they're also looking into KPN, one of the biggest telecom companies in the Netherlands, as well as Fembushi Capital, who are also running their test nodes currently and are looking to be voted in roughly by the end of this year, starting with KPN. So those are just some really great things moving forward towards the decentralization of NEO. Effect.ai has actually rejected an Amazon partnership. Unfortunately, due to the bank account closures, as per the RBI guidelines, ZebPay Exchange will no longer be accepting rupee withdrawals or deposits. So that's no more fiat for ZebPay. That is more unfortunate news coming out of India with that situation, but eh, what are you gonna do, guys? That being said, uh, I really don't have much else news to report on today. Just trying to hang out here, enjoy my 4th of July. I hope that you guys are having a great day as well. I know crypto is doing very, very well at the time of making this video, so you guys don't need me around. Go enjoy your day, have fun. Crypto is doing great, and I will catch you tomorrow. So until next time, stay crypto, and peace out.